The Third Battle of Gaza was fought on the night of 1 the 2nd of November 1917 between British and Ottoman forces during the Sinai and Palestine campaign of World War I and came after the British Egyptian Expeditionary Force victory at the Battle of Beersheba had ended the stalemate in southern Palestine. The fighting occurred at the beginning of the Southern Palestine Offensive, and, together with attacks on Hera and Sharia on 6-7 November and the continuing Battle of Tel el Qualf, which had been launched by General Edmund Allenby on 1 November, it eventually broke the Gaza to Beersheba line defended by the Yildirim Army Group. Despite having held this line since March 1917, the Ottoman army was forced to evacuate Gaza, and Tel el Qualf during the night of 6-7 November. Only Sharia held out for most of the 7th of November before it too was captured. Following British defeats at the First and Second Battles of Gaza in March and April 1917, Lieutenant General Philip Chetwood commanding the EF's Eastern Force and Kress von Kressenstein's Ottoman Empire Force had each adopted a defensive posture and a stalemate had developed in southern Palestine. Entrenched defences approximately on the lines held at the end of the Second Battle were strengthened, and both sides undertook regular mounted reconnaissances into the open eastern flank. In late June, Allenby replaced General Archibald Murray as commander of the EF, which he quickly reorganised. At about the same time, the Ottoman Fourth Army was also restructured. As the stalemate continued in terrible conditions through the summer, Reinforcements began to arrive to replace the large number of casualties suffered by the EF during the previous fighting for Gaza, while several additional divisions also arrived. The Ottoman defenders were also reinforced at this time, and both sides carried out training while manning the front lines and monitoring the open eastern flank. By mid October, as the Battle of Passchendaele continued on the Western Front, the last of the British reinforcements arrived as Allenby's preparations to commence a campaign of manoeuvre neared completion. Prior to the Second Battle of Gaza, the town had been developed into a strong modern fortress, with entrenchments, wire entanglements and a glacis on its south and southeastern edges. A series of field works, mutually supported by artillery, machine guns and rifles, extended from Gaza eastwards to within four miles of Beersheba. Beginning on 27 October, the EF began a heavy and almost continuous bombardment of Gaza. During this time, the EF's 21 Corps, holding the Gaza section of the line, had been mostly passive until the night of 1-2 of November, when a series of determined nighttime assaults were mounted against the Gaza defences. Yet these attacks were only partially successful due to the strength of the garrison. The bombardment of Gaza intensified on the 6th of November and during the night of 6/7th of November successful attacks were launched on several trench systems. On the morning of the 7th of November, Gaza was found to have been evacuated during the night. The Gaza to Beersheba line subsequently collapsed and the Ottoman 7th and 8th armies were forced into retreat. Following several battles during the pursuit, the EF captured Jerusalem on the 9th of December 1917. Chapter 1 Background Gaza was a strong modern fortress, well entrenched and wired, with good observation and a glassy on its southern and southeastern face. These defences which were too strong for a daytime attack were extended eastwards by a series of field works to four miles from Beersheba. These fortifications were between 1,500 to 2,000 yards apart, each mutually supported by fire from artillery, machine guns and rifles. As the troops of the Egyptian Expeditionary Force began to concentrate in preparation for their attacks, they left their camps standing to deceive German and Ottoman aerial reconnaissances. The EVE assumed their opponents thought there were still six infantry divisions in the Gaza area, and one in the eastern sector towards Beersheba. However, according to Falls, here is evidence that they were fairly accurately informed of the British dispositions. On 28 October, they knew the camps at Khan Yunus and Rafa were empty and accurately placed three infantry divisions east of the Wadi Guzzi with a fourth, the 10th division approaching the Wadi. They estimated more cavalry at Asluwi and Kalasa than was actually there. The loss of Beersheba on 31 October stunned the Yildirim Army Group commander and staff. 
The Beersheba garrison withdrew either to the Ottoman defences around Tel Es Sharia or northwards to Tel El Kuvayf to defend the Hebron Road. Here a considerable force, including all available reserve units, was deployed in the Kuwailfa area to stop a threatened advance up the Hebron Road to Jerusalem about 50 miles to the north. According to Powell's, the Turkish line had been thrown back on its left, but not broken. The remainder of the Ottoman line stretching westward to the Mediterranean coast continued to be strongly defended, particularly at Hera, Sharia, and Gaza, but the loss of Beersheba had placed Eve-mounted units across the Beersheba to Hebron, and Jerusalem Road, and three Eighth Army Infantry Battalions were sent by the German General Friedrich Freier Kress von Kressenstein to reinforce the Ottoman troops fighting at Kuwailf to protect the road. They established a new defensive line north of Beersheba, and the 19th Division was sent from the 22nd Corps defending Gaza to reinforce the new line at Ibahov. However, the objective of the EF advance north of Beersheba was to separate the Ottoman forces supplied by the roads and railways from Ramleh on the maritime plain from those supplied by the motor road from Jerusalem north of Beersheba. Such an advance would also place the EF infantry corps in a position to begin to roll up the Ottoman flank. Chapter 2 Prelude. The Eve controlled the coastal sea lanes, and the intelligence service spread rumors about possible sea landings in the rear of Gaza. Ships were seen taking soundings off the coast and a fleet of small boats was located near Deir el Bella. During the late afternoon of 1 November, an embarkation of members of the Egyptian Labour Corps onto motor launches, trawlers and tugs at Deir el Bella was staged as a feint giving the appearance of continuing into the night. The next morning, two trawlers appeared off the mouth of the Wadi El Hesi north of Gaza. To add to the confusion, between the Battle of Beersheba on 31 October and the main attacks at the Battle of Hera and Sharia beginning on 6 November, the Ottoman left flank north of Beersheba was being fiercely contested during the Battle of Tel El Qual for control of the road to Hebron and Jerusalem. According to Wavell, an assault on a portion of the Gaza defences was to be made by the 21st Corps. The date of this attack, which was primarily a feint, was scheduled for between 24 and 48 hours before the attack on Sharia. Meanwhile, preparations for the main attacks on the Gaza line at Hera and Sharia began on 1 November when the 53rd Division, with the Imperial Camel Brigade on the right, advanced northwards to occupy a line three miles to the west without opposition. This placed the infantry in a position from which they could cover the right flank of the proposed attack by the XX Corps on Hera and Sharia. Chapter 2 Section 1 Defenders After the Second Battle for Gaza in April 1917, Kress von Kressenstein, commander of the victorious 3rd, 16th and 53rd Divisions, was reinforced by the 7th and 54th Divisions. The 7th Infantry Division had experienced four months of strategic movement, similar to that of the 54th Division. Having arrived at Jerusalem, in early May the 20th Infantry Regiment began company-level training. After moving to Beersheba where they remained in reserve, they participated in theater-specific training until late June, when they went into the front line. Training in fortification, reconnaissance, and counter-reconnaissance continued. The 21st Infantry Regiment received similar training, and on 6 August the regimental colours of the 20th and 21st Infantry Regiments were awarded military medals for service in the Gallipoli campaign. At Beersheba on 28 June, the 7th Infantry Division inactivated the 4th Company of each Infantry Battalion, before activating a machine gun company armed with light machine guns, in every Infantry Battalion on 10 August. Every Ottoman infantry division in Palestine repeated this reorganization, with one quarter of their rifle strength being replaced by light machine guns, considerably increasing their firepower and strengthening their offensive and defensive capabilities. Following orders from von Kressenstein commanding the Gaza to Beersheba line defenses, assault detachments equivalent to the German Stostruppen were formed. The 7th Division activated an assault detachment of 50 men on 17 July 1917. The Yildir Imami group, under the command of Field Marshal Erich von Falkenhayn, was responsible for the defense of Palestine. 
On the western flank the Ottoman 8th Army was composed of the 22nd Corps 3rd and 53rd Divisions defending Gaza, and the 20th Corps 26th and 54th Divisions defending the line stretching to the east of Gaza, under the command of von Kressenstein. The defense of Gaza was the responsibility of 22 Corps, which had two divisions in the front line and two in reserve. The 22nd Corps 4 regiments, had 4,500 rifles, which were reinforced by two divisions to bring the total to 8,000 defenders, deployed thus. 53rd Division holding from the Mediterranean shore to the eastern side of Gaza. 3rd Division on their left, and the 7th Division in reserve close behind. These three divisions were supported by the 116 guns of the Ottoman 22 Corps artillery, six large naval guns and several batteries of 150 mm howitzers. On the left of the 20th Corps, the Ottoman 7th Army defended Beersheba, under the command of Fifti Pasa. Chapter 2 Section 2 Attackers The Eve comprised 200,000 men, including Arab workers. 46,000 horses, 20,000 camels, more than 15,000 mules and donkeys, and hundreds of artillery pieces. The fighting strength of the EIF was 100,189. Desert Mounted Corps commanded by Lieutenant General Harry Chevelle had 745 officers, 17,935 other ranks in the ANZAC, Australian and Yeomanry Mounted Divisions. 20 Corps commanded by Lieutenant General Philip Chetwood had 1,435 officers, 44,171 other ranks in the 10th, 53rd, 60th and 74th Divisions, and 21 Corps commanded by Lieutenant General Edward Bolfin had 1,154 officers and 34,759 other ranks in three infantry divisions. By 30 October there were 35,000 rifles in the 21st Corps deployed to attack Gaza. They were Colon 52 ND Division. 54th Division. 75th Division. Composite force of almost a division, consisting of the 25th Indian Infantry Brigade, a West Indian Battalion, the French Detachment Francais de Palestine and the Italian Disticamento Italiano di Palestina, was camped east of the 75th Division. Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade 1000 Sabres. 21 Corps Cavalry Regiment, also known as the Composite Regiment, consisted of one squadron each from the Royal Glasgow Yeomanry, the Duke of Lancaster Yeomanry, and the one over one Hertfordshire Yeomanry. The majority of General Edmund Allenby's infantry were territorial divisions, mobilized at the outbreak of the war. Most had fought the Ottoman army before. During the Gallipoli campaign, the 52nd Division fought at Cape Hellas, the 53rd Division and the 54th Division fought at Suvla Bay, while the 60th Division had served on the Western Front and on the Salonika Front. The recently formed 74th Division was raised from 18 under-strength yeomanry regiments, all of which had fought dismounted at Gallipoli. The 10th Division was a new army division, and had also fought at Suvla Bay and at Salonika. All three of the brigades of the Anzac Mounted Division and the two light horse brigades of the Australian Mounted Division had also fought at Gallipoli. Army wing aircraft were assigned to carry out strategic reconnaissances, to report on Ottoman reserves well behind their lines, to carry out daily photography, and to conduct air raids. Fighter and bombing squadrons were established for these purposes while the corps squadrons were attached to the two infantry corps carried out artillery and contact patrols, along with tactical reconnaissance. Chapter 2 Section 2 Subsection 2 Sheriff Isle Forces In July, Allenby was hopeful that T. Lawrence and the Sheriff Isle Arab Force could support a September attack by the EIF, recognizing that harvests were being collected before that time, and that after the end of September they normally moved, to camel grazing lands in the Syrian desert. He wrote, they, naturally, won't and can't do much unless I move, and it is not much use their destroying the Turks' communications unless I take immediate advantage of such destruction, if I bring them into the fight, and do not make progress myself, this will also expose them to retaliation, which to some tribes, such as the Druzes, S, 
of Damascus, may mean annihilation. The Eif encouraged the Bedouin to defect. The Arab rebellion is spreading well, and the Turkish communications will be difficult to guard against their raids. The enclosed photograph of the Sharif of Mecca, and the proclamation by him, is one of the means we have of inducing the Arabs to desert the Turks. We drop these papers and packets of cigarettes over the Turkish lines from aeroplanes. The proclamation is an appeal from the Sharif to the Arabs to leave the Turks and join in the war against them for the freedom and independence of Arabia. A good many come in, as a result of our propaganda. Chapter 3 Rattle. Four EF infantry brigades of 10,000 rifles attacked four Ottoman regiments of 4,500 rifles, which were reinforced by two divisions to over 8,000. Both sides suffered heavy losses. The attacks were to be carried out by well prepared troops, with overwhelming artillery support and six Mark IV tanks. These attacks were designed to keep the Gaza garrison of 8,000 riflemen supported by 116 guns in place after the capture of Beersheba and during preparations for the main EF attacks on Hera and Sharia. Chapter 3 Section 1 Preliminary Raids on Outpost Hill On 26 October, units of the 75th Division raided Outpost Hill. Then, just hours after the capture of Beersheba, on 1 November, a second raid by five officers and 220 riflemen of the three-thirds Gurkha's rifles was carried out against Outpost Hill. At three o'clock, under cover of an intense bombardment, they entered the Ottoman defences on the hill, two Gurkhas were killed and 23 wounded. During the fighting, they killed 28 Ottoman soldiers and captured 16, before returning to their lines. The division was to make another attack during the next night, towards a Toine redoubt, on the Gaza to Beersheba Road. Chapter 3 Section 2 Bombardment On 27 October, the 21st Corps artillery began the bombardment of Gaza, which gradually grew more intense with the support of British and French Navy's guns from 29 October. They included the 14 inches guns on HMS Raglan, the Monitor's M15 9.2 inches guns, the M29, the M31, and the M32 with 6 inches guns, the cruiser Grafton, and the destroyers Staunch and Comet. French vessels included the Requin, Arbolite, Voltiger, Coutelus, Forcano, and Ash. There were also two river gunboats Ladybird and Aphis, and three seaplane bombers. This flotilla was in action, although not altogether to allow for return to Port Said for refueling, until the attack on Gaza was launched. The flotilla was targeted by hostile aircraft, while a shell from an Ottoman shore battery hit the mess deck of the Requin, causing 38 casualties. The land based artillery of Bolfin's 21 Corps heavy artillery consisted of 68 medium and heavy guns and howitzers, which were directed onto the Ottoman batteries during the battle. In addition, two 6 inch guns made a surprise attack on the Ottoman railhead at Beit Honun at a range of 9 miles, supported by balloon observation. Between 27 October and the attack on Gaza, 15,000 rounds were fired by the heavy artillery, 300 rounds were allocated for the destruction of each Ottoman battery which had been located. The anti-battery bombardments between 29 and 31 October also fired gas shells, which apparently had little or no effect. Together with the core three divisional artilleries, the guns produced the heaviest bombardment of World War I outside European theatres. The Sixth Night's bombardment from onshore and offshore guns produced an even heavier concentration of fire on a small area than had been put in on the first day of the Battle of the Somme. The six-day bombardment program was arranged so that the whole of the front of our group is plastered all day and every day. Chapter 3 Section 3 1 slash the 2nd of November night attacks. The 21st Corps attacks were focused on a 5,000 yards stretch of sand hills stretching from Umbrella Hill about 2,000 yards southwest of Gaza to the Mediterranean Sea. They were timed for the night because the strength of the Ottoman machine guns in defensive positions made daytime attacks impossible. On the right flank, the final objective of the attack was only 500 yards behind the Ottoman front line, 
but on the left it was 2,500 yards away. The first phase was the attack at Umbrella Hill by the 17th Battalion Scottish Rifles with one company of 18th Battalion Scottish Rifles. The second phase was the capture on a broad front of El Irish Redoubt to the sea post on the shore by the 1 Quarter Battalion, Royal Scots and 1 Company of 1 8 Battalion, Scottish Rifles. The third phase was to be conducted by the 161st Brigade and the 163rd Brigade against Gaza's southwestern defences, while the fourth phase by the 162nd Brigade was to capture Gun Hill and Sheikh Hassan 3,500 yards behind the front line at Sheikh Island. On 1 and 2 November, the Ottoman 7th and 53rd Divisions continued to defend most of their front line, carrying out locally successful counter-attacks. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 2 Phase 1, Umbrella Hill On 1 November, the assault of Umbrella Hill, a sand dune 2,000 yards southwest of Gaza to the west of the Rafa to Gaza road overlooking the main objectives, was to begin at 2300 hours. The defending garrison was assumed to be about 350 strong. However, at 10.50 a preliminary move into no man's land was observed by Ottoman soldiers in Fisher's Orchard, who gave the alarm and began firing machine guns and rifles, from the Ottoman trenches on Umbrella Hill. At 2300 hours, an intensive bombardment began enabling a tape to be laid, along which the attacking troops formed up to launch their attack ten minutes later. Under cover of the intense ten-minute bombardment, the 17th Battalion, Scottish Rifles with one company of 1 8th Battalion, Scottish Rifles Division, attacked Umbrella Hill. After killing many of the defenders, they quickly captured the hill, three officers, 55 Ottoman soldiers, three Lewis guns and numerous bombs. The attackers suffered light casualties, however the sand dune was difficult to defend because the Ottoman trenches, without revetments, had virtually disappeared during the previous bombardments. The following Ottoman bombardment of Umbrella Hill caused 103 casualties to the 17th Battalion Scottish Rifles during the next 24 hours. However, with the hill captured by the 52nd Division, the main attack could begin. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 3 Phase 2, El Irish Redoubt the second phase began at 3 o'clock on 2 November when the 156th Brigade of the 52nd Division launched the first attack on the El Irish Redoubt. This attack was aimed at breaking the line of defensive fortifications consisting of three groups of trench complexes and redoubts. These were the El Irish, Rafa, and Cricket Redoubts, which were connected by a series of trench lines several layers thick, and backed by other trenches and strong points stretching two miles along the sea with defences to the west of Umbrella Hill. The attack on El Arish Redoubt was to be supported by two of the six available tanks of the Palestine Tank Detachment's eight tanks. The one quarter battalion, Royal Scots assault on El Arish Redoubt was carried out in waves through the Ottoman trenches, during which six Ottoman mines exploded, causing EF casualties. The Ottoman artillery, which had become active as a result of the first attack, had stopped shortly before the second attack began at 6 o'clock with an intense, 10-minute bombardment. At 6.30, a heavy Ottoman counter-attack drove back the leading company of Royal Scots, causing a number of casualties. A platoon from another company helped rally the remnants of the leading company, which was reinforced by the 1 quarter Battalion Royal Scots and 1 8th Battalion Scottish Rifles when the position was consolidated. Two tanks passed through El Irish Redoubt, but shortly afterwards one was abandoned, and the other hit, while a third tank moved along the front line rolling out wire from sea post on the coast to beach post. A man who obviously had been able to get more than his allowance started singing loudly, and was removed. We then set off in a long line, and passed through our front line trenches into no man's land. I saw a man breaking the ranks, and dodging back towards our lines, obviously his nerves having given way. An NCO dashed out, got hold of him, and took him away. I was with HQ. Sigs. In the fourth wave. Four parallel lines of white tape, had been laid out, and I and the others spaced ourselves out along the fourth tape, 
and lay down, facing the enemy lines, to await the signal to advance. Two tanks came rumbling up from behind, and a few of us had to jump up and get out of the way to let them pass, our shelling increased in volume, and at three o'clock the 4th RS advanced in four lines on a front of 300 yards towards the El Arish readout. Two Turkish contact mines exploded as our first wave approached the readout, blowing many of the men to pieces. We were not, of course, aware of this at the time. As I got near the Turkish trenches the enemy shell and machine gun fire became so intense, with shells bursting all around, that I and several others decided to stop in a large, shell or mine crater for a few minutes till the shelling eased somewhat. When the barrage moved forward we resumed our advance. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 4 Phase 3 Coastal Defences when the Royal Scots had entered the eastern section of the El Arish Redoubt during the second phase of the attack, the western half was still held by Ottoman defenders. These defences became the objectives of the attacks by the 161st and 163rd Brigades of the 54th Division, supported by four tanks, including the two which had passed through the El Arish Redoubt. On the right of the 163rd Brigade's advance, the 15th Battalion, the Suffolk Regiment moved towards the Ottoman trenches following a creeping barrage to attack and overrun the western El Arish trenches during hand-to-hand -hand fighting when the 1-5th Battalion, the Suffolk Regiment suffered light casualties. Although they had captured the third line, part of this captured territory had to be abandoned because it was exposed to hostile fire, so they consolidated their position along the second line. Half of the 1-8th Battalion, Hampshire Regiment attacked Burge Trench while the other half attacked Triangle Trench, although it was not their objective. This caused some confusion, and the 1 quarter and 1 th 5 th battalions, the Norfolk Regiment lost direction in the dust and smoke of the cloudy, hazy night. As a result, only small numbers reached Gibraltar and Crested Rock, from where they were quickly forced to withdraw. On the left, the attacks by the 161st Brigade were similarly weakened by loss of direction when the 1-5th Battalion, the Essex Regiment attacked Rafa Redoubt instead of Zawaid Trench. However, the 1-6th Battalion, the Essex Regiment attacked and captured beach and sea posts before attacking the Rafa Redoubt and trench systems, suffering light casualties. In support, a tank rolled out wire as it drove along the front line from sea post to beach post. Cricket Redoubt was captured with the help of the tank from Beach Post, although the tank was temporarily disabled in the process. After being repaired, the tank was transporting some engineers' stores to Sheikh Hassan when it was hit, and disabled again. Two reserve tanks were ordered forward carrying engineers' stores, including sandbags which were set on fire by hostile fire. On the morning of the 2nd, Bolfin put in an attack, by the 54th and part of the 52nd Division, on the SW of Gaza. He got all his objectives, with the exception of a few yards of trench here and there, the Navy have given us great help. They are making splendid practice on the Gaza defences, and the railway bridge and junction at Deir Siniad. This is the result of careful preliminary work and close collaboration between land and sea. Chapter 3 Section 3 Subsection 5 Phase 4, the 2nd of November. On their right, the 110th Battalion, London Regiment finished capturing and consolidating the Rafa Redoubt, which had only been partly captured by the 16th Battalion, the Essex Regiment. Without the assistance of tanks which had been put out of action, this battalion lost contact with the barrage and suffered heavy losses. Nevertheless, they captured Gun Hill and by 6 o'clock on the 2nd of November they were preparing to attack Sheikh Hassan, which they captured 15 minutes later along with 182 prisoners. Lion Trench, 0.75 miles northeast of Sheikh Hassan, was attacked at 7.30 by the 1 Quarter Battalion, Northamptonshire Regiment with the objective of clearing a gap, through which the Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade could advance. However, 20 minutes after their successful attack, the Northamptonshire without artillery support were almost surrounded and forced to retreat to Sheikh Hassan on the coast. Here a strong counter-attack was threatened by two regiments of reinforcements from the Ottoman 7th Division, 
which were advancing from Diasnid to the north and northeast. These Ottoman reinforcements were stopped by accurate shelling by the Corps Heavy Artillery, which fired on the 3,000 yards line previously registered, and by shelling from the monitors off the coast. A planned repeat of the Lion Trench attack was postponed when the one quarter battalion, Northamptonshire Regiment, attacked Eunice Trench instead. Although they captured the trench they were driven back by a counter-attack. Throughout the remainder of the day, Ottoman heavy batteries shelled Sheikh Hassan, before the batteries were withdrawn during the night to the northeast of Gaza. During the night of 2-3rd of November, Ottoman troops strengthened their defenses on Turtle Hill, facing Sheikh Hassan. The Third Battle of Gaza was never intended to capture the town, but to keep the garrison in place after the capture of Beersheba. Only the first line of Ottoman trenches had been the objectives of the 21st Corps, which used new infantry tactics, tanks and massed artillery organized in accordance with Western Front standards. Although all objectives had not been won, the operations had forced two regiments of the Ottoman 7th Division Reserve to move away from Hera and Sharia, forward to strengthen the Ottoman defenses between Gaza and the sea. According to the British official historian, the attack on the western defences of Gaza, had fulfilled the commander-in-chief's object. The EF had also inflicted severe losses on the Ottoman defenders, more than 1,000 of whom the EF buried in the captured trenches. The EF captured 28 officers, 418 soldiers, 29 machine guns and 7 trench mortars. During the fighting, the Corps infantry had advanced about 2 miles on a 5,000 yards front, and held their gains against repeated Ottoman counter-attacks, although the attempt to create a gap for the Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade to ride through was not successful. The frontline defensive system on the southwest side of Gaza had been captured and the infantry occupied a position from which they could threaten Ali Munter and the rest of the defenses in front of the town. The 21st Corps suffered 350 killed, 350 missing and 2,000 wounded during this fighting. Many casualties were blamed on loss of direction and crowding in the captured trenches, which were too shallow. This morning, at 3 o'clock, I attacked the SW front of the Gaza defenses. We took them, on a front of some 6,000 yards, and to a depth of some 1,000 to 1,500 yards. We now overlook Gaza, and my left is on the sea coast, near of the town. The Navy cooperated with fire from the sea, and shot well. We've taken some 300 prisoners and some machine guns, so far. Chapter 3 Section 4, Air Raids Air raids by the EF were carried out during the night of 1-2nd of November, with 12 bombs being dropped on Gaza, and on 3 and the 4th of November, with air raids over the hills north of Beersheba. Chapter 4, Aftermath Chapter 4 Section 1, 3-6 November During a campsin on 3 November while the bombardment of Gaza resumed, the 1 quarter battalion the Essex Regiment attacked and captured Eunice Trench at 4.30. However, they were heavily counter-attacked and forced to withdraw. The following night, several strong Ottoman counter-attacks were made on the 75th Division's position at Sheikh Abbas on the eastern side of Gaza, which were all stopped by machine gun and rifle fire. Meanwhile, the newly won position at Sheikh Hassan on the Ottoman right flank was consolidated. By the 5th of November 1917, the Ottoman 22 Corps commander in charge of the defense of Gaza, Colonel Rifet Bele, was continuing to maintain the integrity of the Gaza fortress, despite the Gaza garrison's artillery batteries having only about 300 shells left. These batteries had also been suffering from effective counter-battery fire from the EF heavy artillery groups. Refet had been warned the day before that evacuation may be necessary because of the loss of Beersheba, so plans were prepared for the complete withdrawal from the town during the night of 6-7 of November, to a new defensive line on the Wadi Hesse. Falkenhayn commanding Yildir Imami group realized that the Ottoman forces could not hold the EF any longer, and he ordered the 8th and 7th armies to withdraw about 10 kilometers. The first indications of the withdrawal were seen by EF aerial reconnaissance, which reported Ottoman hospitals being moved back towards Mejdal. 
At midnight on 7 June November, 21 Corps infantry patrols found Gaza had been evacuated by the Ottoman defenders. Until 6 November, German aircraft had rarely been seen over the Gaza lines, but that afternoon two A.E.8S and two B.E.12.S from No. 1 Squadron AFC patrolling and taking photographs were attacked and badly damaged by four Albatross aircraft. Meanwhile, the heavy EF bombardment of the Ottoman line in the 21st Corps area at Gaza, which had resumed on 3 November, grew in intensity with the naval guns joining in on 5 and 6 November, and it reached its maximum intensity on 6 November. During the night of 6-7 of November the 21st Corps was to launch an attack on Outpost Hill and the Yunus and Bella Trench systems, after the main EF attack on Hera and Sharia began. This attack on the Wadi Es Sharia was to be carried out in the most favorable circumstances against only two Ottoman regiments holding the 6.5 mile line. After launching the successful attack on 6 November against Hera, the Sharia trenches were also attacked late in the day. These attacks were supported by renewed attacks in the Tel el Kualf area, at the eastern extremity of the Ottoman front line. During these attacks, the whole of the Kawuka trenches and part of the Rushdi system which protected Hera Redoubt, were captured and the Ottoman defenders were forced to withdraw to the Hera Redoubt. Late in the day a large part of the Sharia defenses were also captured after Hera was bypassed. Only Tel Esh Sharia blocked the British advance and Allenby ordered the next day's attacks to continue on Tel Esh Sharia, and to be renewed at Gaza. While these attacks took place on 6 November, if aircraft bombed Gaza, the main Ottoman positions behind the Kawuka defenses near Amamiadat, and positions west of Sharia. Three air combats were also fought against three hostile aircraft during the day. Mejdal was also bombed by EF aircraft. Allenby wrote. We've had a successful day. We attacked the left of the Turkish positions, from N. of Beersheba, and have rolled them up as far as Sharia. The Turks fought well but have been badly defeated. Now, at 6 p.m., I am sending out orders to press in pursuit tomorrow. Gaza was not attacked, but I should not be surprised if this affected seriously her defenders. I am putting a lot of shell into them, and the Navy are still pounding them effectively. Chapter 4 Section 2, The 7th of November Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 2 Occupation of Gaza The EF's occupation of Gaza was not strongly resisted, and a general advance during the morning of the 7th of November found the town abandoned. Orders for an attack at 4.50 by the 75th Division on Outpost Hill on the eastern side of Gaza had been issued, these were expanded to include Middlesex Hill and a 54th Division attack on the Bella and Eunice trenches, and Turtle Hill in the coastal sector. However, by 4.35, two battalions each from the 161st and the 162nd Brigades, supported by artillery had already advanced to occupy Lion and Tiger trenches and Sheikh Redwin in the coastal sector to the north-northwest of Gaza. The advance by the 162nd Brigade took them through the gardens and fields of Gaza to the main road northwards, when patrols sent into the city found it deserted. British artillery had destroyed all the homes of the 40,000 people who had lived in Gaza before the war. The 54th Division subsequently took up a line stretching from the Jaffa Road north of Sheikh Redwin to the Mediterranean Sea. When the Ottoman withdrawal became apparent on 7 November, the Royal Flying Corps, which had been mainly involved in strategic reconnaissance for the 40th Wing, artillery registration and tactical photography for the 5th Wing, began bombing and machine gun air raids. For seven days, they also made numerous air attacks on Ottoman infrastructure including aerodromes, transport, artillery, and retreating columns. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 3 Mounted Breakthrough The 75th Division with the Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade attached had been ordered to attack Outpost Hill on the eastern side of Gaza, and exploit any potential breakthrough. By 1 o'clock on 7 November, the 233rd Brigade had already occupied Outpost Hill, and as the brigade moved forward to occupy Green Hill and the Labyrinth at 5 o'clock, they were only opposed by individual riflemen. By 7 o'clock, 
The 233rd Brigade had patrols on Ali Munta Ridge, while on their right, the 234th Brigade found that the beer trenches and road redoubt defending the Gaza to Beersheba Road were still held in strength with machine guns. Throughout the day the Ottoman rearguards in tank and Atoyne redoubts continued to fire their artillery at the increasing numbers of EF troops advancing behind both these Ottoman rearguards' flanks. However, by nightfall, the beer trenches, and the road and tank redoubts had been captured. The Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade, which had been carrying out patrolling duties based at Tel El Gemi, was ready to exploit a breakthrough at Gaza, and the Anzac and Australian mounted divisions were also prepared for a pursuit through a breach in the line at Sharia. At nine o'clock, the Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade rode through the ruins of Gaza to reach Beit Hanun at 1300 hours where they encountered part of the Gaza garrison defending a strong rearguard position on a ridge 1.5 miles southeast of Beit Hanun. The Hyderabad and Mysore lancers had advanced through Jebalia to link with the Glasgow, Lancashire, and Hertfordshire squadrons of the 21st Corps Cavalry Regiment, holding the high ground at Beit Lol 5 miles north of Gaza, where they threatened the Ottoman flank. While the Corps Cavalry Regiment captured Beit Lahia, the Hyderabad lancers advanced at 1500 hours to capture the ridge west of Beit Honun at Sheikh Munam, but the village was strongly defended by numerous Ottoman machine gun detachments. Early in the afternoon, a regiment of the 4th Light Horse Brigade rode across to the northwest to link with the Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade, which had been out of contact with the 20th Corps and the Desert Mounted Corps. The 12th Light Horse Regiment met up with the Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade one mile east of Beit Honun at 1445. Here they delivered orders for the Imperial Service Cavalry Brigade to attack the Ottoman rearguard on the Wadi El Hesi near Tumra to the north of Beit Honun. Division on 7 November 1917. By 1655, the rearguard was reported to still be holding Beit Honun, with concentrations of Ottoman forces at Al Majdal and Beit Darast. The lancers advanced from the east onto the ridge overlooking Beit Hanun, and despite meeting considerable resistance, captured the position. In the process, they secured 23 prisoners, some artillery pieces, and a large quantity of ammunition. They also captured the town's water pumping machinery intact, but were forced to withdraw back to Jebolier for water as the equipment ran on gas made from charcoal which had to be converted before it could be used. Chapter 4 Section 2 Subsection 4 Infantry Pursuit While the 52nd Division was ordered by the 21st Corps to take up a line from the Jaffa Road north of Sheikh Radwan to the sea on the northern outskirts of Gaza, the 157th Brigade began the infantry pursuit by advancing along the shore, reaching Sheikh Hassan by 1215. By 1600 hours, these troops were seen marching along the coast, towards the mouth of the Wadi Hesi, the nearest likely defensive line north of Gaza. By dusk, the 157th Brigade had reached and crossed the Wadi El Hesi near its mouth seven miles north of Gaza while the remainder of the 21st Corps occupied Gaza. Although dumps of rations, ammunition and engineer stores had been formed in concealed positions in the 21st Corps area before the battle, the Corps was not in a position to move any distance. Almost all of their transport except ammunition tractors had been transferred to the 20th Corps and the Desert Mounted Corps for their attack at the Battle of Beersheba. Chapter 4 Section 3, The 8th of November By the evening of the 8th of November, all the Ottoman positions of the Gaza to Beersheba line had been captured and the 8th Army was in full retreat. In conjunction with the captures in the center of the line at Sharia, the occupation of Gaza enabled a swift, direct advance northwards, preventing a strong consolidation of the Wadi Hesi rearguard position. However, the Ottoman 22 Corps was not defeated at Gaza, but conducted a skillful, tactical retreat from the town, demonstrating both operational and tactical mobility. Late in the afternoon of 8 November, 28 British and Australian aircraft flew over Hooj, the headquarters of the Ottoman force, targeting German and Ottoman aerodromes, railway junctions, dumps, and troops in close formation with bombs and machine guns. Arak el Menchie was raided twice during the day with 200 bombs dropped, 
48 hit 10 hostile aircraft still on the ground. The next day, Ettine was bombed, with at least 9 hostile aircraft damaged. Virtually continual aerial attacks were made on railway stations, troops on the march and transport, while a German aircraft was shot down in flames near the Wadi Hesse.